Reading and listening to music and I, I want to do um, tar- um, accounting next year. All right, perfect. I also make music that makes people dance. I write things that people want to read and I make music that people want to listen to. So I will provide your favorite things. But most importantly, I will provide you with life sciences knowledge today, even though you're doing accounting next year. What is your question for our teacher in studio? My question is, how did new species evolve? Right, thanks for that question. How do new species evolve? Well, they do this by a process called speciation, which is the formation of a new species from populations of already existing species, okay? Um, Speciation is the lineage splitting event that produces two or more separate species. Now, very important, before we get into speciation as such, it is important that you understand the definition of the word lineage, okay? So what is lineage? Lineage refers to different individuals that have a common ancestor. So if you look at the tree of life and you go up it, you can see certain organisms that come from the same branch of that tree. And and a nice way to think of it so that you don't forget is to think about the individuals as coming from the same line. Okay, we see that word line Mm -hmm. in lineage. So make it capital letters, underline it so that you remember that they somehow all the way up there in that tree they come from the same line okay so let's look at a section of a tree of life of a certain species of fruit fly now if you have a look here we've got fruit fly a b and c and there are sections where their branches intercept okay and we call these speciation events and what that means is that at these points of speciation events genetic changes resulted in two separate fruit fly lineages where previously there had just been one lineage and you can see that very clearly from the diagram. Um, Another example that we can use to think about it is if we look at the tortoises on the Galapagos Islands, does that ring a bell? By you guys, does it ring a bell? Okay, if I'm boring and you want to chat, (laughs) <laughs> and just like chat to me, okay? Okay, so we're gonna look at the Galapagos uh, tortoises. So if you look at the screen, you'll see there is a cute little picture of species A, and on the opposite side we have species B. And you'll see in the middle that these that, that species A, where there were two, they were geographically isolated. Okay, so, so in this speciation, what is going to happen is we have a population which gets isolated in this example by geographic things such as Um, a river in the way or a mountain or a desert or some sort of hardcore um, like vegetation that they these little tortoises can't get across so they cannot get across to the other side and when these other tortoises are stuck on the other side we are going to see speciation happen and they are going to form two completely separate species even though they come from the same lineage okay So a population can become geographically or ecologically divided. So for example, as I mentioned, by a river, a mountain range, on an island, by a desert, you also need to think about um, earthquakes. An earthquake could actually split, split land and then these animals would be separated. Or the change in river flow, if we had a very heavy rain and a river suddenly overflowed and took one of these little tortoises down the river and he was lost down there, he would then become, well, eventually over time, if he couldn't get back, we would see speciation taking place, okay? So the two divided populations are isolated from each other because of the geographical or ecological barrier and therefore no interbreeding can take place. So there is no gene flow between the two populations. And we've been looking a lot at um, breeding and how we need, you know, to introduce new genes into the gene pool to keep these organisms fit and to keep them strong and surviving for, for longer and longer. But this now cannot happen. Our poor tortoises cannot meet up with each other to breed. So there is not going to be all of these genes in the gene pool, which means what? We are slowly but surely in the two populations, A and B, we're going to see different genetic variation taking place. We're going to see slight mutations happening in the different populations. Then, 
natural selection is going to take place. So because they are divided by something geographical or ecological, they may be in completely different habitats with different food sources, with different landscapes or whatever it may be. And therefore, a tortoise that could survive well in population A may not be able to survive as well in population B because the surroundings are not necessarily going to call him the fittest organism. Okay, so we discussed natural selection. We have been doing that, you know, for the past couple of weeks. So keep this in mind and you can include it here to get your, your understanding even better. Then you will see that eventually we have two completely genetically different populations and if we had to bring them back together, they would not be able to interbreed because their genetics are too different. And that is the point that we know a new species has been formed. Okay, if they have come back and they will not be able to interbreed and produce viable offspring, then a new species has been formed. Okay, now we have a few kinds of speciation. Today we're just going to look at two. We have allopatric speciation, which is geographical spe spe uh, um, se speciation because of geographical separation. Okay, so that's because of a geographical obstacle in their way. Okay, and these groups are then prevented from mating with each other because they cannot get to each other. They cannot climb all the way over the mountain. They cannot swim across the river. They cannot get through the desert or whatever it may be. They must be Romeo and Juliet, eh? They can you know, yeah, they could probably learn something <laughs> from that. But we're not doing English today, Ado. We're looking at biology. Okay, so now this isolation might occur because of a great distance or a physical barrier, such as a desert or a river. I want to ask you very quickly, do you think humans are maybe a cause of speciation? Okay. Could be. Okay, I'm asking you that question now and we're going to come and look at it again later in the show. Those of you at home also, I want you to think about it. Could humans be a cause of speciation? I want you to think about it and we're going to get to it a little bit later. Right, so if you look at the picture, you will see this allopatric speciation. The little yellow organisms cannot get to the blue organisms, so they cannot interbreed. So we will not get a nice mixed green gene pool. We will have our yellow and our blue. Okay. The second kind of speciation we're going to look at very quickly is sympatric speciation. Now this happens when exploiting a new niche may automatically reduce gene flow with individuals exploiting the other niche. Now, you need to understand what the word niche means or exploring a new niche. Niche, very basically, is the way of life of a species. Okay? So, for example, you can see in this, th this diagram, we have both yellow and blue organisms. But even though they are not separated by a barrier, even though they are in the same area, the blue and the yellow organisms do not want to interbreed with each other. Okay? And when they do not want to interbreed with each other, it is because of their way of life. Okay, the blue organisms and the yellow organisms have two completely different ways of life. And because those ways of life do not overlap, they don't want to interbreed. So, so, so we get, we get this um, speciation. A, a nice example is in the Northeast Pacific Ocean, we get uh, killer whales, you know those big black and white whales, yeah. okay? And some live there permanently and some live there certain times during the year. And even though they are both killer whales, they will not mix with each other. They eat different food, they act differently, and they will not interbreed. And that is a perfect example of sympatric speciation. Sasa Konala M. Tata. Um, I've got another lady who's got another question for our life sciences teacher in the studio. But first, Cat, meet Ashika Joseph. Ah, she's on the ball. Cat, meet Ashika. Ashika Joseph, yes. Ashika Joseph. Ashika. Pe Ashika. Beautiful name. Where are you from? Where do you live? What do you do? I'm from M. Tata. I was born in, in India, but I grew up here. I live in Equaze Lukusa. I'm 18 years old and I would like to be a doctor one day. So you were born in India and, and moved to Umtata. How long ago was that? As soon as I was born. It's like my parents went to India for the deliveries. So they lived here before that. Oh, so you're South African, but they gave you a home soil birth. Yes. Even though this is also home soil. This is my home. You lucky people have two home soils. What is your question for our teacher in the studio? My question is, how did the Galapagos tortoises evolve? Right, how did the Galapagos tortoise evolve? Now you're very lucky, this is 
the example we have just looked at so you should know exactly what's potting. Mm -hmm. Right, if we look at the two pictures, you will see there are two nice big tortoises. One has a slightly shorter neck than the other one. You'll see the right, the one on the right hand side is actually stretching that neck up like a giraffe, okay? So and we've had our giraffe conversation as well in my giraffe neck. So um, what happened on the Galapagos Islands, these tortoises were separated on the island and on the one section of the island, there was very little grass. Very, very dry conditions meant very few low-lying plants. And these tortoises were getting hungrier and hungrier. Now, the tortoises that were genetically inclined to have slightly longer necks could reach the food, the, the luscious, succulent leaves that were a little bit higher off the ground. So they were the fittest in their environment and it's survival of the fittest. So as these tortoises survived longer, they were the tortoises that were able to reproduce. And every time they reproduced, their offspring had longer and longer and longer necks. So that the offspring were being born into this environment with the equipment that they needed to be able to survive. Okay, and then obviously the opposite happened with, with the previous population. They, they were on an island, in an area of the, the island where there was grass and lots of plants close to the ground, so they could easily get it with their short little neck. Okay, so the tortoises on different Galapagos Islands show different neck lengths due to the food varieties present on these islands. Right, we need to go back to our question. Do you think that people, us as human beings, help or can create speciation? Mm. Edo, you say yes. What do you guys say? Yes, we do. Yes. yes. How do you think? Do you have any idea? Uh, they might probably take in certain animals and put them in a certain area whereby they might be forced to survive, hence the survival of the fittest. So yeah, they'll try and adapt to the area and try and survive. Okay, right. So that's if we as humans take these animals and move them away deliberately and have to force them to live in those areas. How do you think we create speciation without even realizing it? Ooh, that's a tricky question without even realizing yeah. it. Yeah, think about it. There is a nice open green field and a building constructor comes along and decides he's going to put a road running through. Mm. What happens to all the organisms in, in this environment? Does plants count as well? Plants count as well. Speciation also happens with plants. So now they have this road or a building or a city or whatever it is that we as humans build and it separates the area and it, it forces these, these organisms, whether they be plants or animals, yes. to, to have to speciate in order to survive. Exactly. Okay. I even thought of maybe if it hooks up to your pants and you take it home and it starts breeding with other plants or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. So I hope you guys at home got that. Mm -hmm. Cool.